Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Welcome to Wrexham. It's a new documentary series on FX, but also on Hulu. I watched it on Hulu. Uh, it has been described, it has been described as the almost like a real take on what was is very similar to Ted Lasso. Um, I mean, it's a documentary series about these two actors that you may have heard of who decide to purchase a failing soccer club and attempt to bring them back to glory and to try and get them to be promoted. Uh, whereas in soccer... Uh, there are different leagues, and depending on your performance, you may be demoted, or if you do well, promoted to higher leagues or to lower leagues. And this is a team that is in, I believe, the lowest league or the second to lowest league. They have fallen uh, uh, quite a bit uh, from their their illustrious historic uh Rain in the soccer world, and uh, they are being uh, tempted to bring back. So I would say similar to season two of Ted Lasso, uh, where season one of Ted Lasso, the new owner, uh, is trying to actively destroy the team, uh, whereas season two of Ted Lasso, it is everybody coming together in an attempt to get promoted because they were just demoted in from season one. So, uh, and of course, the two actors in this movie are none other than Ryan Reynolds and uh, Rob McElhenney, uh, who is the star of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And of course, Ryan Reynolds does a lot of commercials uh, and I guess in movies of sort, uh, Mr. Deadpool himself. Uh, so two people that have no experience with soccer specifically. Both are fans of sports in general, and when they learned, when one of them learned, I think it was Rob, learned uh, how soccer was structured or football was structured and how teams can get promoted and demoted and all these things, he loved that idea where, you know, teams that uh, are maybe not doing good can actually work their way up to being in the Premier League and in the kind of spotlight, as it were. And uh, he loved that idea. He loved the, not only sports, but understanding how important sports are, a sports team can be to young fans, to towns, to cities. And uh, a lot of those things were kind of the driving force for them to invest heavily in a team that they are not connected to in any way and in a sport that they are very ignorant to um so it's kind of a learning curve for them but also you're getting to see a team try to rise from the dead as it were the underdog story of a team that has historical value within the sport uh but also uh, a team that is in a place that has fallen on hard times. The team itself has fallen on hard times. Uh, the structural integrity of the stadium they play in is rem is very similar to the the kind of wear and tear that this town and this team is also experiencing. And these two guys who have a love of the sport and have a drive to do something that's not only going to help a team help a town help the people of the town but also they value being successful at what they do and they want to do a good job at bringing all of the aspects that come connected to this football team uh, to bring them up and to reignite them and reinvigorate them and it's a well-told documentary series there are 18 episodes all of which are currently available on hulu i had watched i don't know probably about the first five episodes when they got released and i was hooked i'm a fan of ted lasso i think that's a, a hilarious heartwarming show and in some ways this is 
similar to that being a you know being americans going into uh, a country that they're not from in a sport they're not familiar with and trying to improve their these people's situations right and but taken from a realistic standpoint being a documentary and i got hooked right i despite myself being very ignorant to the sport of soccer you know i played soccer as a kid wasn't a fan i've watched some soccer back you know back when the vuvuzela was all of the rage i remember that the the world cup being on all of the tvs at the electronic store that i worked at and you know kind of understanding the camaraderie that can be surrounded by that uh but i am most turned off when it comes to soccer and, and probably the thing that keeps me from getting into it more and enjoying it more are is the 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 flopping that goes on which is also something that made me stop watching basketball because a lot of european players in basketball uh big injection of european players into the sport in the late 90s early aughts and uh flopping became a very trendy thing to do uh it, and it's a thing that came from the sport of soccer from football and uh i don't like it i, I it, it just it just cheapens everything of the game and is so frustrating to watch grown adults pretend to be hurt but other than that like the way soccer is portrayed in this documentary series obviously exciting i will get excited if you're invested in any sport so and i enjoy this kind of ride that we're on not only following these two guys rob and ryan as they are not only learning about this new business they're in also kind of learning about each other as friends as business partners uh, you also get to learn and follow the stories of the different players uh, the longtime players, the new players that have come in, the injection of new life and new talent, uh, new coaches, new staff, you know, a reinvigoration of the stadium itself, re resodding the pit pitch multiple times, uh, plans to rebuild all of these things. You have the stories of like the local pub. You have the stories of the people that volunteer and and give their time for free to this this club that they love this this football club that they love you get to see the stories of these kids that are huge fans of the sport and of the athletes you're getting to see the stories and the the journey of like musicians that make create art around the the game and this new change that has happened so all of those storylines well woven together in this beautiful documentary series. I would say the last episode, the season finale of this season, which there is word there's going to be a second season, which makes complete sense. I would have hated it if, if I may not have even reviewed it if there wasn't going to be a season two. But there is going to be a season two. The final episode of, this, of season one is beautiful. It is a work of art. The editing of the storytelling, it's an extra long episode. I think most of the episodes are like 20 minutes long, I want to say. And I don't know if this is going to necessarily show me what the episode lengths are. Maybe they will. Um, let's see. First episode is... Yeah. 30 minute episodes normally the last episode is like 50 minutes i think uh the finale do or die yeah 44 minutes so the final which would have been an hour with commercials let's take a little break from the show to promote gift certificates if you want to purchase artwork for somebody you have an art lover in your life and you think they would like my art but you don't know what painting to get them i have over 2,000 original pieces of art for sale in my store along with shirts and 
prints and other things. So I can understand that being a bit daunting if you're trying to buy something for somebody else. Give them the gift certificate and then they can go to my website, inspiredisorder.com, and they can buy whatever paintings they want, they can buy whatever prints they want, they can buy t-shirts, they can buy hats, they can buy all the different merch. Gift certificates, which are available currently at inspiredisorder.com. And now let's get back to the show! Amazingly told final episode of the season. The editing is amazing. It is like intercutting this game, right? The semifinal game of them. And if they win this game, they'll go to the finals with a chance to be promoted to the next league, which at the beginning of the season, they were in last place, right? They were, it was, it, they really came made all these changes invested all this money and they were still losing games and there became like a turning point where things needed to change they made a small change and reinvested in people that they believed in and they went on a crazy run and they had this crazy opportunity at this last episode and the, the inner cut of the gameplay of this final episode which is dramatic within itself as most of the games were leading up into that point mixed with these stories the conclusions of all of these stories of these people that we've been following along with with different fans from all different generations from these different players some of them who are no longer playing with the team people that have been brought in newly brought in people that have been there for most of this season uh this coaching staff the the overall staffing management and even rob and and ryan what they've been trying to do to bring awareness to the team to just get this team's uh brand elevated to a level where they are popular and known and to help generate money beautifully told final episode beautifully told right and how even in the gameplay there is a moment where it's all kind of building to a point right a building to a point and it like there's this freeze frame and it cuts to this just simple silent moment with one of the fans folding jerseys doing laundry and it's like you know what happened but it's just so beautifully done in that way to where it like it constantly throughout that episode it would cut away from the action of the game to another story and the pacing is amazing the kind of roller coaster of emotions was amazing beautifully done i like blown away by that last episode the series the season was amazing in general but that last episode was beautiful but this show does so much to give you i mean it's the best thing about documentaries is that you learn a lot they're very educational in general most documentaries educational and in this documentary it's not just about these two actors buying a team and trying to make them popular it is about the team itself Wrexham the the stadium which is like the oldest stadium in the country this this uh this place in Wales uh, what Wales is and how it's different from the rest of the United Kingdom and Britain and all those things like how it is like this overlooked place and this town that was like this mining town, this factory town, I don't know factory, but a mining town and how like things have changed. This is a story that takes place after COVID. So it's also relating to how the world is opening up again, post lockdown of COVID and seeing how this town is struggling to, to come back, you know, talking about how what games were like during the lockdown playing them with nobody in the crowds and how like not only are crowds going to be let back in but also a lot more attention is on this team because of the high profile new owners it also shows the struggle it was for them to become owners for them to get control of the stadium itself in order to do the work they needed to do the sordid history of the previous owners 
the the history of the team and how the team and the town has been screwed over by previous owners and how they've kind of the the way the town owns the team so now business decisions have to be a majority vote by the the town itself and how even the idea of them buying the team to begin with was in question obviously they did there's a whole season but so you get the stories the background of the team the town itself uh, also the players that are on the team the players that get cut the players that get brought in, the new coaching staff, the new behind the scenes staff, management, all that stuff that gets injected into this place, all the money that, that Ryan and Rob are, are investing in uh, this team, re redoing the pitch multiple times, right? The way it was done the first time didn't work out and they had to put all this money back into it to completely get renovated again. Um, this whole part of the stadium that's falling apart and they have these like mock-ups for what they want to do with the the stadium itself to reinvigorate the stadium to rejuvenate the stadium you get to see the town the people of the town the different fans of this sport it also dips in there's an episode of hooligans which one of my favorite soccer inspired movies is green street hooligans a great movie uh, which I would have watched as well. Just after having watched that, it's a great movie I haven't seen in a while. Of course, it's not available anywhere. Uh, I've never seen the second one. I'm sure it's garbage, but the first one, Green Street Hooligans, is amazing. Um, and just hooligans in general, and it kind of dips into what that is and how bad it is for the sport, for this team that's trying to... like They don't want violence and bad things happening. Um, so how that is kind of s another aspect of owning a team that the owners have to deal with. All of it is amazing, having that goal of being promoted and how everything starts with just nothing working. Like even after, like they get this guy, they bring this guy in who from a, a higher league to come in and it's like, oh, finally we got this guy. We're going to start making some goals. And it's like, you know, so much is on his shoulders to to succeed and how it's just quite not enough. And it's like, do we get rid of the coach? Do we bring do we invest more in like do we double down on this coach and bring inject more money and do what he wants to do and and how they have to try and figure that out and just getting advice from different people that are have experience running teams and running understanding how you have to take the long view of running a team and how much different that is from being a fan and running a a uh, a like being a, a armchair coach or an armchair owner where it's like as a fan it's so easy to say you should fire this coach you should get rid of these players you should bring these people in because it's like it's easy to make those decisions when one you don't actually have relationships personal relationships with all of the people that you're talking about right they get they form a bond with the coaching staff with the 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 players and all that and you realize these people are real people they have lives so you can't just move them around like pieces on a game board and or like on a, a fantasy draft board um that there's actual lives that are attached to those people and understanding the direction you want to go long term with the team all of that stuff brilliantly told let's take a little break from the show to promote the many faces that's right i am also an artist i do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces a new face a new painting gets released every single day over at inspireddisorder.com so head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist also there are prints available for select images. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com, buy original art, buy prints if that's your jam, if you want eight by 10 prints on high quality paper. Also, if you're looking to wear some art, there are shirts available with original artwork by myself. Select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form. You go to InspiredDisorder.com, you buy original artwork, you buy prints, 
you buy shirts, you're supporting an artist directly. And if you're the type of person that likes to invest in NFTs, there are also NFTs available for select faces. Go to inspireddisorder.com now. And now let's get back to the show. Also seeing these two guys try to learn about whales, learn about the the people and try to get them to believe in what they're doing because it's very difficult to just not buy into some something that could just be a PR stunt you know despite the fact that these guys are investing a ton of money it's like they have to as a town who has already been screwed over by people they have to trust that these guys mean well with what they're doing all of those aspects of that are told brilliantly in this documentary series throughout this season and 18 episodes. It's amazing. Amazing. So well done. Um, and it's just, you know, you want to see them succeed, right? Because Ryan Reynolds, despite the fact that, you know, personally, I may be kind of tired of Ryan Reynolds' shtick. In movies, he's kind of the same guy in all of his movies, and it's it's a little exhausting. Uh, like I I like the guy, but it's like it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, I never been a fan of. I've tried to get into. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Not a huge fan, but I you know I like those guys. I I appreciate what he's doing, especially in other aspects of cr- the creative space. You know, I've seen other things that he's doing, trying to expand and reimagine what it is to create things. So I have a lot of respect for these guys. And I want them to succeed. I obviously want, you know, you always want to see that underdog succeed. And that is what, in so many ways, that is what this team is. Right, this team that's kind of fall, and even in, even after they've done all this work, they're in like last place, right? And and it's, like every nobody, it's it's easy for everybody to hate and to doubt what your your intentions are and what you're gonna do. And there's this amazing moment where things change, where things change, and attitudes change, and momentum changes, and that's a beautiful moment. Whether it's if it's the momentum shift within a game itself or a momentum shift in the larger picture of what's going on, it's always exciting to see that momentum shift, right? To, to feel like you're on the ropes, to feel like you're down, to be down, to be the worst case scenario and to somehow turn that around and get the momentum going in the direction you want it to go is a beautiful thing. And you get to to you know get to know these characters, get to know their families, what they're struggling with. Uh, there's like the hometown kid that finds success. There's guys that were brought in to kind of reinvigorate and how passionate they are about being successful as well. Beautiful. Um, don't really learn as a viewer. You don't really learn a whole lot about the game, soccer, uh, even the owners. Like when offsides happens, they are completely oblivious. They're conf- completely confused. Uh, but you don't really need to know, right? It's like most sports movies. They don't really spend a lot of time unless you're watching uh, the Indian wrestling movie Dangal that I, I watched recently. That did a really good job at, at telling the, the rules and how things are scored in freestyle wrestling. Uh, most sports movies don't get into the s- specifics of how how game the game works but you don't need to know you don't need to know you see momentum you see like energy and you know what their their goal is and even if they don't meet their goal i mean you can kind of assume the last episode of the season is a semi-final match right so you can kind of assume where it goes but even though part of the main aspect of their goal wasn't achieved in this season they were still able to achieve so much they were able to bring hope 
right? Not only did they change the momentum of things, did they get things moving in the direction they want, right? They, they understand that they are, they are definitely moving in the direction they want to be moving in, and they, they fell short of, the, of achieving their goal in this season, but that hope is there, that fire is there, right? And the advice that they got is is showing and is paying off and even though they fell short in this season they that like they have they know it's going to work right they've been proved they've proved the concept has been proven right they have a team that can pull things together and do amazing things they have the ability to be successful right they have everything in place Right. And, and given a full season where they're not like rebuilding and figuring things out and can just focus on hopefully staying healthy as well. Obviously, a lot of people got injured in that last game. There were pe- key people that were not playing that game. So you have to see these supporting characters kind of try to rise to the occasion, some better than others. You get all that and you see that momentum. And that's why, like, the way the final episode was edited was beautiful because watching the episode, you know, it's like, Oh, it's gotta be, it's gotta be. But how it's told is so beautiful. I absolutely loved it. It's, it's, it's so great. Um, and and I can't wait for the next season, a great documentary series, a, a great story. You know, it injects all of the information and education that you would want and then also gives you what you would want from a sports movie or TV show, right? At the heart of it, it's a sports piece of sport entertainment, which is always fun and always exciting. One of my favorite kind of genres of movies or TV shows, obviously Ted Lasso, I'm a huge fan of, and this show, Welcome to Wrexham, as well. I'm a very huge fan, and I'm excited to see what happens in the next season. Uh, who knows when that's coming out, but I'm glad that there is going to be a season two. It would have it would have been made no sense to see how, like, the trajectory of where they're going at the end of this season and to not be able to continue to tell that story would have been a shame. So thankfully there's a second season, and I'm highly looking forward to it. But before it comes out, head on over to Hulu and check it out. All of the episodes are streaming, all 18. Welcome to Wrexham. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today, Today is, is the, the day, day where you, you wake up and you realize, realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.